I haven't made a video in so long. It feel like I've been abandoning my YouTube. another video all right so i know i've been gone for a really 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 long time it's been months but there has been so many things happening i launched my hair growth oil i relaunched my fitness company i'm back in school but those are updates for another video today we're going to talk about the update on how i won a lot of money doing sport betting i will say that i was able to launch my two businesses with the money I made from sport betting so I do just want to give myself a round of applause for that <laughs> moving on if you did not see part one of this video when I originally started making bets at the beginning of this year I will put the link in the description below so make sure to check that out to see where it all started and today is pretty much going to be an update video and I want to let you know the five things that I did that allowed me to win so much money. I played around with a lot of different betting styles and a lot of different research I did. So this was a long process for me to figure out which techniques actually worked um, and provided the best results. So now I definitely feel like I have a nice solid understanding um, of sport betting and how to make sure you're not losing all your freaking money <laughs> and these five things that I did learn has helped me tremendously in making a lot of money with sports betting so feel free actually please do hit the subscribe button hit the like button too while you at it so you can continue to follow me on my journey of sport betting as I continue to get better hit bigger and eventually become a billionaire with all of this after I realized how good I got with the sport betting my goal became I want to be a millionaire off this sport betting. So if you do want to see me continue my journey and becoming a millionaire off sport betting, definitely hit that subscribe button. Definitely turn on your post notifications so you can know when I post a new video. And just because I've been gone for a couple of months, my business are nice and successfully launched. I will be making a video about that, but I will be back posting multiple times per week. So turn those post notifications on and let's get right to the video. Okay, just to start off with how much I've made with sport betting so far, that is $12,000. $12,000 um, within a short amount of time. And like I said, some of the techniques that I was using before, not working. But when I started realizing what did work, my money just kept increasing and growing and growing and growing. So let's get right into it. Number one, I would say that this is kind of important um, just because you get the most bang for your buck this way know what app to use when you're doing sport betting. So if you're going to the casino, then that's completely different. If you're using apps such as FanDuel, DraftKing, or any of the other betting apps, know which app to use for your bet. So say it's a hockey game on and you're using the FanDuel app, but actually if you use the DraftKing app, then we have a special promo where if you bet up to $25, you get your money back if you lose the bet. And that'd be really beneficial because that's, it's pretty much a risk-free bet. But you won't know that unless you have multiple apps. So I would say download multiple sport betting apps and get your free bets because most apps that you download at first, they give you free bets. And they also have options where if you invite friends, they give you more money to bet on. So use all of those perks, have multiple options when it comes to the apps. So when you're thinking about making a bet, you know, which one has the best promo because more than likely one of the apps are going to have a promo and that's the app you want to use for that and another thing i want to say about knowing what app to use fandua has really great payouts for parlay bets so if i'm ever trying to do like uh, a really nice parlay i would more than so try to go on to fanduel and do it there versus uh draft king they're better known for like i would say the promos and like the regular bets but DraftKings do have this new feature where it's the same game parlay and it's a nice little parlay feature. But Pandora is definitely a little bit more known for that. Number two, know your sport. This is so important. So this is where I kind of, <laughs> in the beginning, I lost most of my money because I did not know my sport. So when I started, it was around, ba around basketball season. And 
I don't know if it's basketball season like during the pandemic or if it's always like this. I would think it's because of the pandemic, but it was really hard to bet on basketball. Like nothing was, you couldn't guess anything um, because it would be a lot of time for the game start and then certain star players aren't playing, but you already made your bet or a team you was like, oh, this team is definitely gonna win and they don't win. And that's kind of what sport betting is, but it's just really different when it comes to the NBA, especially during the pandemic, because everything was just kind of in the air, really in the air. If you're a sports fan, if you're an NBA fan, then you know what I'm talking about. This was definitely not a great season to bet on the NBA. Um, I would say a lot, you know, to just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put all my life savings on any of the NBA bets right now. It's not to say don't bet basketball um because it's still a good sport but another sport that's also where i realized like i'm probably going to shy away from that a little bit or just not bet as much is soccer soccer is really complicated because it's not just this team is going to win or this team is going to win it's this team is going to win or they may tie or this team is going to win so you now have more odds against you it makes it very complicated because even when i predict that the better team is going to win it ends up being a tie and it's just a lot of complicated things now that is for money line bets so for the more in-depth soccer bets that might be a little bit different but i know if you're trying to do money line bet for soccer <sighs> now some really great sports to bet on i will say is boxing that's a really good sport to bet on when you're choosing the right odds and also i would say football football is honestly my favorite sport to bet on is actually football season. I'm thankful for it, so stay tuned. Again, subscribe, because I will be making more bets. And football season is when the money goes up. That's for the NFL, and that's for college football as well. But I will say when it comes to football betting, the best bets and the most consistent wins that I got were when I was doing money line home team bets. So sometimes, even if the odds may seem really great, for football if it's a traveling team and this is kind of with any sport if it's a traveling team it's a little bit more risky than if they're playing in their own home and they have a nice chance of winning so those bets are kind of just like it's a hit <laughs> it's pretty much a hit so betting on home teams and football is a really great option um and then also i would say baseball white Sox. don't bet on the white Sox. don't bet on the cubs i tried many times <laughs> <laughs> but I would say baseball is another great sport to bet on. And what I've learned, there may be a team that you're like, oh, this team is going against this team. Oh, they're definitely going to win. And a lot of times that can be true. But like I said, there's factors that play into part. And when I realized this, I was able to hit way more of my baseball bets. So for one, I always look at it again. Is the team that I'm betting on, is it the home team or the away team? Just because it's the way team, that don't mean I won't bet on it. That just means I'm probably going to play a little bit more safer. But say it's the home team. Okay, cool. Now, the next step I'm thinking about is what part of the series is it in? So, for instance, the White Sox and the Red Sox just had games this Friday, this Saturday, and this Sunday. And the White Sox was kind of the more favorable team to win. So, they played on their home field on Friday. That was the first game of three they played with the Red Sox, and they won. Simple math. Home team expected to win, and it's the first game of the three round series. But when Saturday came, I knew not to bet on that game because you don't know how it's gonna go after that. It's three games in total, so it's kind of like, you kind of want to expect that one of those games, the other team will win. So you don't know which game it'll be. The first game usually goes a little bit more planned, but then game two and three, it's like, I didn't know which one the White Sox was gonna lose. It could have been the one on Saturday, it could have been the one on Sunday. But that's why I always check to see which game it is being played. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's go on to number three. So number three is large parlays are equal to lottery. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I'm just being honest. <laughs> but large parlays are equal to lottery. So that means that there's a chance you may win the lottery. There's a chance you may win a large parlay, but there's an even bigger chance that you're not gonna win the lottery. And that's kind of the same when it comes to large parlay. It sounds good when you're creating that large parlay, 
and you just see the payout amount just keep increasing and increasing like oh and you just want to keep going and keep adding and now you got a 10 bet parlay and you just like yeah i hope this win but <laughs> those are like lottery it's very it, it can happen you can win but the same thing is like the lottery like it can happen you can win but more than likely it's a gamble so when i'm trying to do a large parlay what i'll do is I'll literally bet the least amount possible as I can. That can range from literally a dollar to at max, at max $20. Because it's more of like make a wish. <laughs> because anything can happen in the sport gambling world. So large parlay, they're really risky, but they're possible. But, um, and I've tried it both ways where I do like, um, I tried it with the low odd bets. And those are really tricky because if you're doing like a eight to 10 parlay bet, and they're they have low odds it's going to pay a lot of money if it hits but the odds are already low so the fact that you're already stacking eight to ten bets on it it makes it even more difficult but i also tried it where i'll do really high bets and when i say really high bets i mean like negative thousands like put a whole bunch of negative thousand bets um in a parlay and i'll always be so close it'll always be just that one team that mess up and that's kind of how large parlays are you ever played the lottery and you're waiting for the number to come on the news and they get all the numbers right you get to that last number and it's just wrong it's just that one number that's wrong and you just mad you just mad because you just had that one number correct oh moving along to number four number four is high odd bets so when you're making a bet, it's really important to see what the odds are. So if it says something like negative 500, negative 600, I would say even negative 400. Those are really high odds. So it's a good chance that that team may win or whatever the bet you're making will win. But if you see something like with a plus sign, then the odds of that bet winning is really not in your favor. So if you're looking for a quick and easy payout, this is for if you're looking for a quick and easy payout. Look for the high up bets and play them one by one, or I would say at max do a three leg parlay if you want to really make sure you win. So the best way that I was able to really let my money build and build where I finally was able to reach that $12,000 goal was because I made sure like on a consistent basis, I would always look for a bet that I was like, okay, this is a high up bet. The odds look good. The stats look good. Everything looks good, and I might not make that much money off of it, but I will more than likely win that bet. So I play it to get a quick and easy payout. It might not be a lot. So like, for example, if I make a bet that has the odds of negative 400 or more, then I'm probably not gonna win like crazy amount of money because the odds are already high and more than likely they're gonna win. So what I'll do is I'll still play that so a lot of people kind of overlook those bets because they're like, oh, I won't make a lot of money off of it. So they just keep going for the risky bets. And I mean, that's cool if you really have a plan with just doing risky bets, but it's like the amount of money you're gonna be losing is kind of gonna equal up to what you get paid back. So I really try to make sure I have that balance of knowing that I'll get paid and I do those bets to just have a quick and easy payout. But I do at least one of those bets daily. So I'll do those bets daily and I'll make sure I'm winning at least about $15. So if I'm doing it daily, I'm doing bets that I for sure know are gonna win because the odds are nice. I'm probably not gonna really get paid that much, but I'll make sure I bet enough where I can make $15 at least off that bet. So if I'm doing it daily, making $15, that's $105 a week. $105 a week turns into $420 a month. And $420 a month turns into $5,000 with $5,040 for a whole year. So even just that alone, me just making those high odd bets daily on the side, you know, those are not the only bets I'm doing, but that's just something to make sure I'm for sure having something coming in. And if I ever lose any of my other bets, I for sure got this over here, like just continues to build and pal. That's 5,000 a year. So it's kind of a way, it's kind of like having a check-ins account and a savings account. You know, you kind of dibble and dabble through the check-ins account, but the savings account, you just kind of want to build. So I kind of use that as like my savings account of sport betting. Okay, so for the last tip, for the last thing that has really helped me tremendously, number five, bet what you're willing to lose and divide that by two and a half. Well, let me say it one more time. Bet what you're willing to lose and divide it by two and a half. 
this is the tip that has helped me tremendously save a lot of money and lose less money over time. So the reason I say this is because some people may be like, okay, I am willing to lose $50 on this bet. So they bet $50. But then if they lose that bet, now they don't have any money left that they're willing to lose to try to get that money back. Now they have to tap into the money that they were not willing to lose just to try to get it back. And now they risk just kind of declining, declining, declining. And now they're just down a lot. So a really great way that I learned to kind of prevent this and it has helped so much. It's one of the biggest reasons I've been able to continue to build and just stack with these sports bets. I literally will be like, okay, just for example, I'll be like, okay, on this bet, I'm willing to lose $50. So if I have a pre-established amount, $50, I'm going to divide it by two and a half, which equals $20. So now I know that I will bet $20 on this bet because if this bet wins, then great, I won. <laughs> but if it loses, I still have $30 left to continue trying to make my money back and, you know, continue to bet. So it's kind of like if you go to the casino and you say, okay, I'm spending $500 at the casino today. You walk in and the first game you play or the first hand you play, you just put the whole $500 down. Now it's gone and you're just like, yeah, I guess I'll just go. Like, no, you're not gonna play the fi whole 500. You're going to kind of break it down so you're able to continue playing if you do lose that money. So I hope these five tips have been helpful for some of you. Like I said, am I an expert? No. Am I an advanced better? No. This video is a little bit more for beginners so you can kind of avoid the mistakes I made and so you can incorporate some of the tips that really has helped me to continue growing my money through sport betting. Like I said, the $12,000 that I made has been possible because of these five tips that I've been using. And I feel like I would've made even more if I would've avoided some of the things I said in this video to avoid. So, thank you for sticking with me if you made it this far in the video. But wait, there's more. I will be posting really frequently now that I have my businesses jump started. I will be making videos on those. Like I said, it was possible through sport betting. I'm very thankful. And I'll be posting videos on my road to a million through sport betting. So hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications, hit the like if you enjoyed this video. And that way you'll be able to stay updated. And don't forget, football season is now in place. So I'm gonna be making some really great bets so you do not want to miss it. So stay tuned for the next video I post. If you want a part three, comment below. Part three, part three. So until next time on Shiny One Ace YouTube channel, I will see you on the next episode. Hey you, are you still there? Are you still watching the video? Okay, so this is for only the people who didn't click off the video yet. I have another secret tip as well that has been very beneficial and has really played a successful role in me winning my money. First, comment below, I heard the secret tip if you are still watching this video so that I know that you stay to the end of this video. All right, so the reason why I say this to the end of the video is because a lot of people may not really believe in energy and things like that. So I'm just going to kind of say this for the people who do. One thing I noticed is that anytime I'm making a bet, no matter how, how low the odds may seem, how high the odds may seem, when I'm super anxious and I have really negative thoughts around the bet, I literally lose the bet 90% of the time. And I began noticing that. If you believe in manifestation, this really aligns with that and I'll be making more videos on it. But there could be a bet that has a really high odd chance of winning. But if I'm just constantly saying things like, oh, I don't know if that bet's going to win. Or if I just have like really high stress energy around it, then that bet a lot of times lose. But if I make a bet and I just make it and I kind of go on about my day, I probably don't even watch the game. Even if watching the game is not bad at all. Know your stuff but I don't have any stress surrounding it. I'm not saying, oh, I don't think this bet is gonna win. Or if I see the team is kind of losing and I already made the bet, I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, they're losing. I'm gonna lose my money. That type of energy is really bad when it comes to sport betting. Like I said, this is only for the people who understands manifestation and energy. It's real in sports betting. Literally, I will bet on a team that does not have a chance of winning. But because my energy is just so positive around it, I don't have anxiety around it, I just kind of place that bet. 
go about my day. I'm not checking the score like, oh my gosh, I'm losing. I'm literally just having faith that it's going to happen. I go back and I check the app and I won the bet. So I will just say positive energy is very beneficial when it comes to things like this. So that's my little secret tip. Shh.